Today is October 17th. The Yankees remain out of the playoffs. We are going to hear from you guys and talk a little bit about the state of the Yankees. So let's do it. Let's talk Yanks. Hello and welcome to Talking Yanks, brought to you by SeatGeek Code. John Boy Postseason is going to get you 10% off tickets of your choice to anything you want to go see. How are you distracting yourself this postseason with the Yankees not in town? Going to see some shows? Well, use code John Boy Postseason for 10% off. You can buy a ticket tomorrow and the next day and use it each and every time. How are you, Jake? James. Davis, thank you, Seat Geek. Go see some. Why not? I'm doing well. I'm I'm enjoying the playoffs. We've been uh, streaming on JM Baseball. We've been doing talking baseball pretty much every day uh, through October. So it's good to get away from Yankee baseball. Although, uh, as we posted yesterday, nice little Yankees talking Yanks powwow yesterday, talking about the miseries of of the current state of the franchise. Uh, but I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm excited to see uh, what the people called in with. I think we got, what was it, 200 voicemails in 30 minutes? Something like that. Conservatively. And then, you know, that we at least doubled whatever that number was after I tweeted, all right, we have enough. I'm not looking at any more new ones. Oh, that's um, classic. That's going to get you some new ones. So, that, that will get you some new ones. A lot came in this morning. But. Uh, yeah, generally, uh, generally well. Can't believe... God, October, man. October's a funky month. I get birthday feels. It goes by kind of slow, but also freaky fast. Yes. Like freaky fast. I love October. I want it to slow down. I think it's speeding up, Pop. The weather's nice. It's beautiful. We're getting like a nice fall on the East Coast. I went back to California. It was 75. When I got the plane, I was like, Oh, rainy. A lot of people are complaining about the rain. Each well, that was early. Been, I, each weekend has been rain. Oh, it did it rain yeah. this weekend while I was gone? I think every uh, weekend there's been a, rain. There's a TikTok page I've been getting suggested and it's rained 16 of the, or 14 of the last 20 Saturdays. That's just a tough run. I don't mind if it rains at night or like early morning or late night. Oh, yeah, that doesn't Because I like the, the wet day. Like the eeriness where like the, you know, it's kind of like steam's coming off the streets a little bit and the sure. worms are out. Mm. Mm. I see with that. Postseason's been a little, uh, we talked about last episode, I think it was last episode, about, you know, there's a lot of ex-Yankees in the postseason. None of them are really actually hurting my feelings or like right. feeling like burnt out or, bur- or scorned or whatever. Besides Monty, I said that one is hurting. Harper playing first and, and Cashman's <laughs> quotes about him saying like, that's not realistic. That's, that hurt. I'm, at some point, we all need to collectively just get over it. And for non-Yankees fans, I think they're like, what are you talking about? He was never even a Yankee. But the fact that Cashman's quotes and what's happening now are crazy. Those are, like, hurting me. Like, when he played first and that Cashman quote was going around, that it's unrealistic. I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. that, like, this is a five-year-old sting that shouldn't still be fresh, but it just opened up a little bit. Monty and- shutting down the Astros game one uh, is is... The biggest sting of them all, because we traded him specific when we were a a World Series contending team going to the postseason, going like, you know, easy path to the CS against the Astros. That was when at the trade deadline, that was pretty clear what the Yankees were going to have to do last season. And they traded Monty and said he wasn't a postseason pitcher knowing you were going to go to the postseason in the Astros, and then he shuts them down in game one, the only pitcher to really shut down Alvarez this postseason. And I feel so happy for him, but that is, I mean, I think like Cashman and Co., how much more egg can get put on their face in the in this postseason? 
Because it's a lot of new shit just keeps being like, and bam, faced. You said this and faced. Chapman's getting saves, albeit like scary as shit and kind of doesn't look good and he's giving yeah. up hard hits. Spending, not breaking, yeah. I guess. But yeah. still, like, it's just... But is Chapman going to, like, close out the World Series? I'm saying right now he doesn't look good, but, like, that would be bam. Because every day... Yeah, he could also boom. lose the World Series. Like, we've, we've seen... Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but, the, but uh, my point... The my point like, almost lost game one but my, well. my, my point is, every two days, there's a new bam, faced. Oh, yeah. You guys were wrong about that. Good. Like, isn't that good news? Like it, it, No, because, well, I don't believe the Yankees are going to change, so no. Right, uh, and we're <laughs> still waiting to see more updates from the external audit of other teams, which isn't auditing themselves. But, yeah, I mean, man, you can, you know, it's fair game. <laughs> it's fair game, and whether it's the Harper quote, uh, which is hilarious that he's playing first base, because that's, it's almost like Brian Cashman, like, technically he didn't have to say that, right? Like, he, he could have just been like, hey, you know, no, you know, Bryce Harper is a great player. We, uh, we're we're looking at other things as we build this team. Like, good luck to Bryce the rest of the way. You know, Philly paid a good amount for him. Blah blah blah. Like to just throw in like, oh, Bryce Harper can never play first base, right? And now here it is, twenty twenty three. Uh, he's only playing there because he wanted to, because he got uh, TJ surgery, so he would have fit in perfectly with the Yankees with that. Um, but. Yeah, and then, I mean, Monty Monty is more so kind of what we've done when we've looked at trade deadlines and we talk trades this offseason. It's what has value. Monty had a year and a half of value, which is one of the more popular trade items. And the Yankees knew they were short of hitting in outfielders. So they took a chance on Bader, which ironically was one of the only guys that hit in that postseason that they were contending. Um, but he couldn't hit it all this year. And I think where the Yankees definitely, well, ironically don't feel the egg on their face is that they weren't even close. They got swept by Houston last year. They were awful this year. So, like, all of the moves, when you put everything in there, even go back to the Judge press conference before the season when they were like, well, we, we offered Aaron Judge $217 million. Look at this. Look at this goon. Well, Hey, why don't you fork over another buck 50, Hal? So, yeah, I mean, almost all of Cashman, Cashman's kind of signed up for your, you know, whenever the Yankees talk shit, it backfires. Almost every time Cashman's talked, it's backfired. Yep. It's just been a really, really bad run. The audit makes no sense. Just not, just not really. They bought a textbook. (laughs) Yeah, the (laughs) audit makes no sense and like, it's only on the analytics now. It's not on anything else. It's not on Cashman. But, like, man, the list of bad trades and bad free agent evaluations and bad self-evaluation is, okay, clearly the algorithm that you've built to project uh, uh, project outcome and project value on players is different. No one else was giving IKF $6 million oh. to be a bench player. God. But you guys did. You thought... He, that other teams would also offer him that. First piece of business they took care of last offseason. Yes. Well ahead of the deadline. Oh, they settled at six. And that was an aggressive move to cover up that they made already an error on it, right? Well, I, well it doesn't even know. because yes. But then they went into the spring training, and he, he, was. he was not, like, he wasn't even in the competition for shortstop. It was Peraza mm-hmm. and Volpe, but you gave him six mil to be a bench player and IKF like that his skill set is his skill set. It was just like a drastic overpay based of the rest of the league. They were wildly wrong on all of the prices of all the free agents. And Cashman has kind of said, we misread the market. It's like, well, the tools you're using are clearly not good, which is exactly what judge said. It was like, we have all the data, but the way we're interpreting it is not good. So I don't know how they come out of this audit and those judge quotes and this whole like, we're going to be as honest as we can. We're going to look each other in the face. That's what Hal said. He was like, we're going to really look at each other's face. We're going to ask the hard questions and be brutally honest. I don't know how you come out of that and say, okay, we're good, and we're all staying. Right. That's, that's the part that's wild, and that's the part, again, we just had another Heyman article come out that was like, again, the, the audit isn't what everyone thought it was going to be at first because it's just an external audit of what other teams are doing. So... Yeah, I mean, in a way, they're going to come back and say other teams do this, this, and this, so you're going to teach some old dogs new tricks that 
I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, the, the Yankees roster needs a lot of change. Uh, and that being said at the same time, that they, they're going to need guys to perform better, whether that's an Anthony Rizzo who I'd say 98% he'll be back and has an actual decent reason why he played bad. Uh, someone like Carlos Rodon. We were talking some pitching staffs yesterday around baseball, and the Yankees definitely need to add to their pitching staff, but the hitting being the worst in the league, ac- athletics don't count, <laughs> ask Trevor May. Like, they have to make so many changes, and a guy like Carlos Rodon is going to have to be significantly better. Like, um, we talked to Toronto yesterday. Like, Jose Barrios had a really bad year in 2022. He went in the lab, made some changes. He had a really good 2023. The Yankees are going to need a chunk of those to happen, whether it's your Rodon, whether it's a DJ, whether it's Rizzo, and they need to add a bunch too. And hopefully by the time June gets here next year, we're like, wow, the Yankees feel a little bit different. Um, but, yeah, it's this uh, watching the postseason, watching these other teams dominate, the Texas Rangers. Corey Seager, I think he was a free agent at one point. Uh, Bryce Harper, he was a free agent at one point. Twenty six years old, both of them. Actually, half the agents. Phillies lineup uh, was free agents at one point. That, uh, yeah, I'm. I don't know. I'm excited to be tantalized for another two weeks by good baseball, and then I don't know. It should be that time of year where we start getting some weird audit rumors, and the Yankees have to start doing something. Um, and that might even be more tantalizing because, you know, big free agency moves don't usually happen till early Christmas, December. Yeah. Around before, like a couple winter meetings a couple first week before, of December. Yeah. A couple before. Last winter meetings were pretty good. Well, yeah, yeah. I feel like the last two years we've gotten it earlier than. A yeah. It went, it went kind of back to normal. Usually there's a yeah. couple big ones before Christmas and then it's, you got to wait till like mid uh, or after the that dead week of January and then like you get a bunch of others. Back in the day, it was they were all done before Christmas. It was like right. notable if a big yeah. guy was. It's still heading out more there. that way. Yeah, we're trending back. I, and I we think went. that was think kind so. of old. I think that was a little bit old CBA and collusion. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that kind of came out. <laughs> yeah, well, last year everyone was offering so much money, so yeah. a little different. Yeah. New CBA and the, maybe. the year before people were trying to get their deals done before the lockout, oh just so God. they knew where lockout they, times. they live. I uh, what a sport. What a sport. I, uh, I'm looking at this article that Heyman wrote for the New York mm. Post, and I am trying to dissect the article itself being written. Like, I know Yankees news is slow, and you probably have to hit deadlines, and we got to do the episode no matter what's going on, so this is our topic. But this is an article from Heyman, and uh, as tough as I am on Heyman's Twitter, his articles are pretty good. BBD always points that out, like, Pretty insightful, good written articles. This article is nothing besides one line. Mm. Like, it's the headline is Yankees will likely suggest Aaron Boone do one thing differently. And then the first paragraph of the, of the article is nothing. It's just saying, like, they're auditing it. Like, we already know. And the last three paragraphs, and two of those paragraphs are just one sentence, are nothing new. Just like, and they should, they might be interested in Bellinger's at the bottom. Mm. So the only kind of, like, line it's one it's like 10 words it's higher ups will likely just suggest that's a tough that's a bad that's <laughs> higher bad. ups will likely just suggest that feels like if you write a paper in middle school and your teacher comes back to you and they just circle that and they're like that's so too many that's not how we write yeah so rewrite that too many escape words here rewrite that Higher ups will likely just suggest to Boone to instill more discipline. So I don't know if like Heyman got this well, scoop. Finish it. Uh, parentheses uh, example be tougher. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, so they'd circle the whole sentence. No, to what they'd circle that first part, and then you'd see that they circled the whole thing. And they were but like, it's interesting. Rework. Nothing. Nothing else here is is in info and that's the headline of the article. So like one, this is Heyman just has to get stuff out to me to deadline. And like, this is kind of like, Oh, this is kind of the most recent thing I've heard, but let me just be safe. How I write it and say, will likely just so it's cause it's not, it's not like, you know, I didn't hear this verbatim or it's like, he was got this news and ran and was like, I don't want to build a whole story around this, but I just, right. I just need to be I'll, the one. I'll add whatever out. other like baby notes I've got. Um, but. Yeah. Kind of weird. I mean, it's not even really—it's not even really an article. 
That's what I'm saying. You look at it. There's there's three sentences, some ads. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, uh, and it's I a don't. really weird. That's a that's a little bit state of journalism. Higher higher ups will likely suggest to Boone to instill more discipline. I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of in, nothing. In a way, you want like there's a chance that could be a half a feather in a cap. Like how how many times this year? As much I'm a Glaber Torres fan, that you know, you could teach a player by. If you have another defensive mental lapse, get him out of the game. Like it, it happened with Luis Renjifo this year, and he actually ended up having incredible, like his before and after numbers are crazy. I'm not saying that's exactly how it works, but I, I, and just the fact that we've still gotten to the point where it's, so the front office tells Aaron Boone his, le- his discipline levels. I, what yeah, is I, that? Like that's, that's I can't even really gotten, can't even really get into that. We've gotten so far away from the manager's actual job. And Judge's thing was like that Boone holds the players accountable. And then I asked Boone about that and he was like, Yeah. So but so Judge says that I don't know. I can't even it, the whole article is kind of like, what is this? Should we get into voicemails? I think we can get into voicemails. Voicemails are brought to you by Tommy John, uh, myself, and maybe that article writer we just talked about, where Tommy John. <laughs> Tommy John underwear and loungewear, dozens of comfort innovations, breathable, lightweight, moisture-wicking fabric, four-time stretch. You know what? Oh, shit. I wear it every day. I wear it every day. I'm wearing it now. At the end of this, I'll pop up. I will flash the top of my underwear band for the YouTube people. And you'll see that I'm wearing Tommy John. Uh, it's a game changer. Uh, it's been a huge move in my life. And I was able to get them for 20% off because I went to TommyJohn.com slash Yanks. And that'll save you 20% off. So there's a link in the description. Uh, it's kind of the next step. Up your game a little bit with Tommy John. Grow up. Oh, October, getting real, real quick. Uh, Tommy John, they're the best in the game. TommyJohn.com slash Yanks, and now I'm going to flash our YouTube audience. Ooh. Living in a big old town. There it is. Mm. The dog is a clown. Shots fired at nudes. hey Hey, guys. I would say the biggest, or one of the biggest problems with the Yankees this season was the fact that we have no good hitting lefties. I mean, we have we have the short pores, and we need to start using it. Um, I would say, you know, having a couple more lefty hitters that could actually hit uh, would be nice. Big fan. Have a good one. Biggest problem with the Yankees this season, not enough Yankee-caliber offensive players. I mean, look at the lineup throughout the season. They were putting out guys that do simply do not belong in a New York Yankees lineup. Look at all the playoff teams still fighting. Top to bottom, strong lineups with depth, guys that can hit one through nine. Yankees didn't have enough of them. In fact, they only had two of them. Get better offensive players. It's as simple as that. This is Brian calling from Lexington, Kentucky. What's going on, guys? Chris. Uh, I don't know, man. I just, this year, I feel like as soon as Judge went down, it's an obvious thing to say, but nobody wanted to step up. Nobody wanted to be the guy, uh, be like the captain. You know, I feel like if we did have somebody like Brett Gardner still on the team, you know, he would have taken up that leadership spot, would have taken charge of the team, but just nobody wanted to do it. And once Judge was out, everyone's done. I think our team is way too old, but I think we need a good veteran presence different from what we've had. I guess that's about it. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Hey, guys. My name is Carmine Collin from Florida. The biggest problem with the 2023 Yankees outside of the injuries was the underperformance of a lot of our important guys. Stan LeMahieu started off. I think we need to take care of issues like that, get them healthy, and we need to reconstruct our lineup to best benefit the Yankees and Yankee Stadium. More lefties, Contact guys at the top, power guys toward the top middle. Thank you. Hey, my name is TJ Houston. The biggest thing with the Yankees this year is just the inability to play traditional baseball. They've got stuck mm-hmm. on numbers that have shown to not work. They 
don't put balls in the play that well. The contact rate sucks. They strike out, and they're awful at base running. Look at guys that they traded away and let go. Um, they just need to get back to good fundamental baseball, putting the ball in play, running the base as well, doing the little things right. But for now, if they continue the way they're doing, they'll fail. Simple as that. Hey, guys, this is Mark from Edmonton, first time, long time. Voice. My biggest complaint about the Yankees in 2023 was that it felt like there was no room to change or adapt on the fly. Everything seemed so analytical and by the book, black and white. Life happens in the gray area, and I wish the Yankees were allowed to live in the gray area a little bit more. Go Yanks. Can't wait for the next season. What's happening, John Boy, Jake, and BBD? Uh, obviously, there was a lot of issues with the Yankees' offense this year, but I think the main thing was their hitting approach that was just different than it has been for the past decade, which is not being able to draw any walks or get on base, and then obviously being afraid of signing left-handed hitters. Why would we play to our strengths? It doesn't make any sense to me. That obviously needs to change, and that's it. There it goes. Biggest problem was re-signing Judge and doing literally nothing else after. Everybody was like, yay, yay, we're saved. But the whole problem last season was not was not having an offense, and Judge by himself obviously can't fix the offense. So that's the problem. Thank you, and goodbye. Biggest disappointment the Yankees had this offseason was not, absolutely not fighting for a spot in the playoffs for doing something in the trade play deadline. It was absolutely horrible. We grabbed a pitch out of Chicago. That was the biggest disappointment, not doing absolutely nothing at the trade deadline. It just showed all of our fan base that we didn't matter to any of them, for real, especially the front office. That was my biggest disappointment, not doing shit at the trade deadline. Hey, what's going on? Big Yanks fan here. Biggest problem that they had going on, they had no young talent. You got to play the young guys. Play Pereira. Play Volpe. Ooh. Play Dominguez when he gets healthy. Get rid of LeMahieu. Get rid of Stanton's contract. You paid Judge. Got to work around the young guys. Sign some young guys. Don't go for fucking Bellinger. It's going to be some BS. Some some long-term contract. He's going to go back to his fucking Dodger days. No good. We need to invest in younger talent. And we need to work, work, work. Go Yanks. Hey, what's up? Jimmy and Jake. This is Wes. I think that the biggest problem with the Yankees is that and this is a quote I saw on social media, which I actually agree with. The Yankees have dangerous hitters, but not consistently good hitters. So I think if we find guys who can, kind of like a Brett Gardner type of role, who can drive the count or pitch count up and really get on base consistently, bring up the dangerous hitters, give them chances to plate runners, then we can make a little more progress offensively. But yeah. Hi, this is Nolan from Orlando. I love you guys. I've been watching you guys' stuff for quite some time. My biggest problem with the Yankees this season or for quite a while is just their mentality and if things are always, like, pushing things down the road. Like, when they have big playoff games or just games, they have to save their bullpen for the next game. I remember watching mm-hmm. the Braves Phillies game. Rob Thompson used all of his bullpen arms now to win that game instead of trying to save them for the next game. So I feel like the Yankees need to start doing that more. They need to start focusing on winning the game now instead of trying to win the game that's tomorrow or later on. That last one is 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 maybe the they're all pretty big. They're all pretty big. But when you go back to the ALCS, since we're in the ALCS right now, and Game One of the ALCS, and the Yankees were. Down two runs, or they were tied, right? Tied going into the sixth inning. And they went to Clark, and he gets out of it. We're like, whoa, why are you bringing Clark in first in the fifth after Tyone? And he gets the big double play. And then Trevino, who is like, he's been the escape artist. You're like, why aren't you using him? And then they tried to get extra outs with Clark after escaping it. And then he gives up two home runs, and now you're losing, and then you bring Trevino in after anyway? That was like, what are we, what's happening? Yeah. These weren't playing to win that game, like to attack it. Game one of the ALCS. Game one of the ALCS. In Houston. Yeah. Against Justin Verlander in a tied game. They didn't go to the good bullpen in a tied game. Like, 
Loisaga, Holmes, Wandy were your three. And in game one, tied in the seventh inning. Those in the seventh inning, Jake. Then you got three, your three big guys are available. They didn't even think about going to them. ALCS. So that's a huge, that's like a big difference in actual like managing or coaching or, or, or um, philosophy. It's like Teams attacking. Approach. Um, Frankie Montas in the seventh inning of that game. They rehabbed him that day. Yeah, there's a lot of problems. I don't even know. Thank you to everyone that called in. Yeah, I mean, awesome. There's infinitely more of you that called than, than made that cut. But. Awesome. Uh, thank, thank you, guys. Uh, where do you want to begin, Haas? I don't know. I know we've talked about balance a lot lately, but I was looking at the lineups from all the World Series winning teams recently hmm. and, like, the top hmm. five. And it's it's just it's even more apparent than like I think I've ever realized yeah. how much you need it. Uh, you look at the Astros last year, and the Astros kind of have always been righty heavy, so they are a little bit of the outlier here. Mm. In their twenty eighteen or twenty when did they win twenty seventeen? It matters who your lefties are. Um, yeah, but uh, by number of bodies, they've always been fairly right-handed. Yeah, yeah, like twenty um, seventeen when they won, they were pretty right-handed. It was it was Springer, but then Bregman, Altuve, Correa, Yuli were like kind of the meat. Right, but every Springer other team, yeah, every other team, it's uh, it's pretty nice. And now they have Altuve, Pena, Jordan, Bregman, Tucker. So like in that first six, if you're an opposing manager, you got to really think about you know, the way you use your bullpen. Because their first six guys, the Braves uh, in 2021, they won. Rosario, Soler, Freeman, Riley, Duvall. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, and I, So I've just been going through that and I've kind of been like, what? 2018 Red Sox, Betts, Benintendi, righty, lefty, Pierce, Martinez, uh, Bargarts, Nunez, but maybe they were facing Kershaw. In your first five, you need two lefties. You need lefties, plain and simple. I could walk you through every playoff team that's remaining, the final four teams. There's a switch hitter and a lefty, or multiple lefties, in their top three or four in their lineup. Uh, every lineup has it. It's, the fact that we are even talking about it is insanity. If you type into Google during that, I typed in just, just a panic just I'm a sad Yankees fan. I typed into Google, only right-handed hitters win the World Series. Do you want to know what popped up? 1929 World Series, uh, Connie Mack only threw right-handed pitchers because seven of the eight Cubs were right-handed. So in 1929, <laughs> those had... frisky Cubs made it with a ton of righties, but Connie Mack yeah. beat the system and he only threw right-handed pitchers. So that was yeah. Howard Emke, George Earnshaw, Guy Bush. Hey, that's, that's actually a Cubs pitcher. That's we'll so you, that even out. even before we, which we've talked about plenty. Even before we talk about what home stadium the Yankees play in, you just need balance. That's just important in any lineup. George Earnshaw got two starts, and so did Howard Emke, and then Jack Quinn. Lefty Grove didn't get a start. The other thing. Uh, well, a couple things. Um, I took a note. Uh, I think there was a voicemail in there from Brian from Lexington, but he said that at the end, which I really respected. Uh, I got scared at the first second that like, oh, did I, did I cut off his whole voicemail? And I remembered there was a guy that, he, I, that said it at the very end. He said his whole piece and then he goes, Brian from Lexington. I was like, okay, we're signing letters. I like that. I loved that. Um, the, the lefty thing in balance is just pure insanity. The fact that. Hey, can I tell you something about that Connie Mack situation? Sure. It's kind of cool. His two best pitchers during the regular season, or like the most starts, were Lefty Grove and Rube Wahlberg, the two names I know. Sure. And because the, so like really, you're. Well, the Rube Wahlberg machine. Yeah. Uh, well, I think, it, I think this was the Rube that was crazy and would show up drunk in, to games and stuff, but I don't, there's a lot of Rubes. They just called all the dumb people Rube back then. 
to bench your one and two starters because the other teams got all righty shows you how much even back then they knew about the handedness effect, which I know was your point, but like, like it wasn't no name, right? Later. Was it no name lefties? Right. <laughs> it was it was hall of Famers. Starters. It, um, it just Rube matters. Wasn't a hall of Famer. Uh, you know, I've gone through the three batter minimum and how, you know, it, I think there's even more of a factor now cause you can, you can trap a reliever and, you know, Cattell Marte for my snakes. Yes, he he's a good lefty hitter, but if you bring in that lefty for Corbin Carroll, um, Cattell Marte is nasty. He's like a one dotter MVP level against lefties. So you you need that in, in the fact that there's this brain trust in the Yankees front office that thought the weakness in the market was bringing in more righties for Yankee Stadium is insane and dumb and dumb. Um, so, you know, you can say whatever you want. I, I mean, Donaldson, holy crap. Um, the fact that, I mean, they were still leaning into that as of 2021. Uh, and then basically they came out of that saying like, wow, we kind of need lefties and outfielders, huh? But we can't get our hands on any. Well, they got, it's like, well, then you're bad at your job. Well, Gallo and Benintendi, they went out and got, so they're going to point at that. But Gallo isn't the type of batter you need that's the guy that's not like that caller that's a not consistent but like a power threat but not actually well that's uh, just a miss by their core analytics yes um, ben and Tenney was a fine move he just got hurt um, yes but i know that's they're gonna counter it's like we tried to go get lefties they didn't work out it's and like, they did with benny like i'll yeah. shake their hand on that you made a trade deadline move you got a left-handed outfielder uh gallo you knew there was a chance of failure and we heard that the yankees front office because there's 20 people that work there were split on that move and half of them didn't want gallo because they thought he'd stink and he did so like i don't know the uh interested to see what I'm, I'm not even, because I thought it was an internal audit. I thought we were going to, like you said, with Hal, we were going to look around the room and say, Ooh, what you guys doing, that's bad. Well, that's what they did. Hal said they not. did that, but not, they didn't bring a third company. They all got it in a room together, and they all were very honest with each other. No, they didn't. They all said, oh, well, you know, this was bad this year, but just wait. And that's not going to happen again. I don't know. It's, um... Ignorance. You need a lot of things to change. We had a pretty depressing combo yesterday. Because they need offense. They need pitching help, too. So. And they just need to get, like, better vibes. Yeah. Their pitching has more hope than the offense. I, I trust them to be able to adjust their pitching. You have Matt That's Blake. Been malleable. I think you can bring in you can bring in other additions, and even you know we saw some of their young pitchers have slight success this year. Whether it's Britos or Luis Hill should be back next year. Those aren't guys you bank on, but you need organizational depth um, compared to what we're talking about offensively. It's the same thing. It's one guy. It's not it's the same. Cole thing. and Yankee. Cole and Judge. Not the same thing. Kind of is, man. Like the Yankees pitchers have history of success at a certain point. But I could say, like a lot the, of the, the way you're way you're talking not. about Nestor is the same way I could talk about DJ. Like they're the same thing of like, yeah, we we think we hope. Well, like, DJ's older in his career, and Nestor had w one year and a half of good. You yeah, know? and then and then Rodon is like Rizzo ask. You hope it was injury related, and not success, right? But we're talking about five spots instead of nine. Yeah, spots. Yeah, so it's just like scarcity. But it's Cole and Judge are the two on both sides, right? And like the mean, rotation those guys are teams would kill to have either one of those guys. Any team would, for They're sure. Two of the best. One's going to win the Cy Young. The other could have won the MVP if he stayed healthy. But the pitching was also very bad this year. Yeah, but I I do think you know Yankee fans haven't had a lot of bad seasons like this. That I think when things fall apart. They all fall apart. Um, but, you know, Rodon, if you're that again, hello. Then everybody, he's Pavano. Front office has to just full-blown go. Um, not saying you can bank on Nestor, uh, but at least those guys have hope. And they still need to bring in some innings, and we'll see what goes on with Clark as he's like the trade asset and, and things like that. But the Yamamoto. offense has no hope. Yamamoto. Uh, 
Yeah, the hope for the offense is you bring in a lefty. Like pitching fluctuates, and, you know, Toronto is another example. Barrios was awful last year. Manoa was God. This year, Manoa dies. Barrios was great. So you're, you're going to have some ebbs and flows with that, where offense, you need good hitters. They need and half their lineup, they didn't even have an option for that. Yeah. I mean, if you believe Rizzo was headache causing, and then you have Judge, Glaber, Rizzo as three. <laughs> that's third. three. Yeah. That's three. It's like having one good starting pitcher. Which is what the same. That's what I'm saying. It's the same. I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, unless you just believe in Rodon as the two. Um, I think he can be better than this year. Well, yeah, six eight five. Right. Yeah. Six eight five and only pitch half the season. So yeah. I think he can be better. As currently time. constructed, they have King and Clark, who Clark obviously the bad start to the year brings down every number. He didn't end the strongest, but they were we 20, generally believe in him to be 29th a twenty ninth in batting average, twenty seventh in OBP. Like they're starting pitching, they were tenth in WHIP last year, tenth in K per nine. Like there's some things there. The, the numbers outside of Cole are, are do stick out more on paper than what oh, it sure. felt like. I'm pretty equally concerned. I guess is my. They need to add Better. pitching, too. They yeah. need to add pitching, too. I have more. If you were to tell me, like, Rizzo, DJ, Glaber, Stanton, one of those four, two are going to give you a really good year versus the other starters named Cole giving you, two of them giving you, like, a full good year, I would bank on the hitters. Granted, now there's nine positions versus five. So, yeah. So yeah, that almost more. doesn't solve the lineup still. No, the lineup is the biggest issue. I one hundred percent. I'm just saying, like, if they need to also like Yamamoto or or trade or pitcher, like they need to do something over there too. Because it's not good. The whole thing's not good. That's why it's depressing. The whole team needs the pitching can bounce big. back. The hitting can't. <laughs> so. I don't think the I don't think the pitching can bounce back. That's okay. I think both can't. Because yeah, I think you're gonna get. Most one, and then you have two. You have Cole and someone else. But I also didn't believe in the pitching before this year, and we had this kind of same conversation. Yeah. I mean, Rodon's injury before the season was brutal. Yeah. So a lot of hinges on Rodon. A lot of changes. I'm excited to get to like, when are they going to do their press conference? I feel like they do it these days, but they're doing so many internal audits. No, they're not. I wonder if they're going to make any changes. Like, okay, you're auditing the whole analytics department. Like, is anyone, any changes there? Well, technically they're not, right? Like, they're well, auditing they're, external stuff. They're not looking inwards at all. They right? are looking inwards. The third party is giving them, like, what, this is what other teams do. And then Hal talked about the three-day summit they had where they all, like, audited each other is how they're saying it. And if that's true... I don't think he's lying. Like, I think that's what their goal is. Then you need to come out and say, and let the audience, let your crowd and paying public know what you found. Right. And what you're changing. Because if they, you know, no, we had a really good meeting and uh, we're going to, we're going to do some things differently. What? We got this. We got it. Trust us. No. Yeah. You're not trusted right now because you admittedly can't be trusted. You're, that's why you're doing this whole summit to figure out what went wrong. They need to give the public something tangible. And I'm not big into like they owe the the fans anything usually. But it, at this point, you do kind of need to say like, we are going to change. Here's what we found. Something. Something. I don't think they will. A, a lot of teams played in, were eliminated from the playoffs and have spoken since yeah. the Yankees last played. Yeah. And the Sherman report was that they, they think the uh, they're – going to go get pitching help but they think the lineup will bounce back like the complete opposite of what everyone else thinks <laughs> yeah but the a lot of what we talked about yesterday was like you know no matter how many changes they make and they should make many on the offensive end they they do ultimately need multiple of the guys they currently have to bounce back to some degree which sure some will hope i hope you pick right and that's the thing that's that's the thing i mean there's so there's going to be a handful of guys that are back just contractually or whatever it is, and they're going to need a handful of those guys to be better. And so it's going to be hard this whole offseason. You know, it's October to get to April 1st. Um, 
we're not going to be able to believe in those guys. There's always going to be a counter to not believe in Stanton or Rizzo or Rodon or Nestor or whoever it is. And some of those guys will have to be good this year if the Yankees want any chance of being successful. Yeah. I hope I believe it when the season comes around, just like I believe in Farmer's Dog taking care of my dogs. What do you believe about it, Jim? My dog's been eating Farmer's Dog. Mm. They get very excited about Not it. Not the actual Farmer's Dog. Both. They, I don't, I don't know what's in that bag, but I do. It's very uh, do, fresh. Yeah. Yes, I think they tell you. Uh, the Farmer's Dog doesn't use any sorcery or secret ingredients, let's say. It's just fresh food. It's just science. Farmer's Dog makes and delivers fresh, healthy dog food. It's developed by vets. Nutritionally balanced and made from real healthy ingredients uh, to human food safety standards. Also, it comes in a box, uh, and the and the food's there. It's got your dog's name on it, and they're in these bags, and they're frozen. And when you take the, them out of the box and you put them in the freezer or the fridge, it feels like you're moving bricks of gold in a heist. Ooh. It's very yeah. cool because you're, like, stacking them. They're solid. They're sturdy. They're, like, kind of that like cool color you're like oh am i on a heist and no. you've been sharing the food with your dog so you hide it from katie so it actually feels yes, like a heist yes yeah i actually just a uh, popsicle like it frozen uh <laughs> noodles, so noodles came in yesterday nice mm-hmm. get 50 percent off your first box of fresh healthy food at farmersdog.com slash john boy plus you get free shipping that's the farmersdog.com slash john boy for 50 percent off the farmersdog.com slash john boy Yeah, I need some moves and some and some shake up because I I need to have a bit more hope than I do right now cuz right now I'm kind of like 50-50 on um just just label it a rebuild year. Just label it they won't do that. Like 2017. Like we're going to find out who we have with some of our guys and we're going to run this back and we're going to like attack the free agency market in 2025. Let us know. Otherwise, I uh there's just too much to do to like be a contender next year. Right now. That's how I feel. Without being like pleasantly surprised by multiple guys. Yeah. Can the, Yan- what, uh, I mean, you know, in a way this feels like recycling combos, but I, I don't think it is at all. What I guess organizationally, what do you want the Yankees to do? They need to, if they say, Hey, we, you know, we don't have to name names. We're, a uh, few of our main analytics guys are out. We're bringing in a new crew. Is that does that check a box for you? No, they can still be like secretive and say and just say, you know, after talking it out uh, and hearing you know Judge talk about it and seeing the things that we were putting value on, we've learned that that is uh, not working for us. And at this point, we have to pivot. We have to change what we value in our analytics department and we have made changes to um our our formulas and all that like even that in time okay. would be That's enough all, all right not to That's have fa- not well not to have faith in the 2025 uh 2024 yankees but just that would be what i would need um to have faith in the 2024 yankees i need like the big blockbuster moves everyone talks about that aren't gonna yeah happen. no i wasn't saying that i was saying that just strictly in a in a silo yankees ball uh, what you need to hear from the organization for them to check that box. And it's where they just have to admit we're making changes. For, like gr- like grand philosophy changes. They need to grand. say that's what okay. we're doing. They cannot hint at all about it being an unlucky season and injuries hurting us. And that was a big thing mm-hmm. Hal said in his thing. is like, why are we getting injured all the time? That was one of his questions he yeah. posed in the summit. Like we cannot, he was basically saying like, we can't just use that as an excuse. Right. So, but I'm so worried that they are. I think they It'll think be this was an unlucky They year. definitely believe it's part of the reason. Cause even. Well, it is, you know, but like. You're, Judge and Rizzo, right? Like, but you're right. They can't say that. Yeah. And I wonder if they're conscious enough to realize that. And I don't think they are. Yeah. I don't either. But they need to. Yeah, I am very scared. They're they're just like going to run it back because they think this was unlucky, and they truly believe like Rodon's a lock to be better, Nestor's a lock to be better, right? Which th- those are not the case. I I, I pose this hard for Rodon to be worse. How many players <laughs> he get injured the whole year? I mean, we've that seen, might be better. Yeah, how many players? Stats will be better. <laughs> that would be better. How many players? 
would you say are a lock to be all star like ballot? They don't need to be all stars, but they're on the ballot. Next year. In, in general, we're votes, talking about they like, had a good season. Because, you know, yeah. I mean. They land on all JM discussions. I guess, like, where do you think, like, where's, like, DJ land for you? Not like a lot if he's, for that. If the offseason ends, he's our starting third baseman. Like He would have be been a, cu- a couple, couple years ballot. ago. I, I had the confidence that he, like, would have been a couple years ago. But no. Okay. I'm a little. Like, you would bet. Your friend's money. No, this dude's going to have a good year. Um, His bat isn't even that bad. How we used to feel about the Yankees. How Braves, Astros. Judge, Torres, Rizzo, if they're back. Um, Rizzo's got a pretty good card to play. Yeah. Rizzo's got a pretty good card. To play. And they and they have so many. I know we don't want to give the so many moves out they have because to make. part of this, it, part of him also feels like their responsibility <laughs> that they messed up. Rizzo has a pretty good card to play. Um, Was having his best season before he got hurt. I can I can choose to believe in that with how many moves need to be made. I can let them go into the year with that and believe in it. Garrett Cole has pretty good ground to stand on. Couple guys in the bullpen. Michael King, in a way, I don't know if I can bank on him being a fantastic starting pitcher, but when you he's get a been good on return. the field, he's been a good pitcher. I have Judge, Cole, Glaber, Rizzo. And, like, Glaber and Rizzo are... Glaber, I'm confident, but it's one side of the ball. And Rizzo is, once you see it, you're going to feel good. He was before the before the concussion. He was three oh four batting average, three seventy six with a five hundred slugging. It's fifty three games, so small, but it was two months. It was really good. Third of the season, but that's not a lot when you got nine positions. Hopefully, the guys they bring in are left handed and good in their own. And right. I'm not saying be an all star, like you right. know. I'm saying. You're you're we're a, at, we're you're an above average season. Because <laughs> there's a you know there's just a chance that by more guys in the lineup being left-handed, the the righties you do have can benefit from that. Yeah, I'm a little worried they get like uh, Kier don't Meyer, rely on that. They get like Kiermaier and Bellinger, and they're like we're lefty now, and it's like well, you know, Kiermaier's an eight seven eight bat, yeah. and Belly is not incredibly trustworthy. Like, if they throw the money that they think he's going to get, it's a little like what we just did with Rodon, where you're like, just like... Be a nervous first month. Yeah. Be a nervous first month. I mean, but I, they they just need lefties, so like... They need a lefty that pushes Stanton down. You know, they, you've complimented the Blue Jays last yeah, offseason. They brought in their lefties. They brought in Belt, Varsho, and Kiermeyer. I mean, that's comparable to... I mean, Belly and Kiermeyer would be... Kind of similar to Belt and Varsho. Belly's a higher level player than those others. Yeah. Where did they... Belt eventually was leading off, right? Belt moved up to... Um, he had a good year. I mean, he's a veteran... And he's good, good yeah. ...ball player. He just... He also gets hurt a lot. So there's, you know... There aren't easy solutions... I like the Donovan trade everyone's talking about. Hello. But I guess we can do more plans. So it looks like they started out with Varsho in the four hole and Belt in the six and Kiermaier nine. So they were really balancing out the back end. And then as it went on, Belt moved up to three and then eventually two. He was there split up, split up the top of the lineup. Springer, yeah. Bichette, he, they, he had, they had him and Varsho penciled for opposite roles, I think, and then they eventually made that flip. Just worried about Stan. He can't be four. Agree. Like, he can't be the four hitter. They need someone to push him to five, <laughs> Max. Need to get a lefty that will hit ahead of Stan. Like Stanton. 
push him to L.A. Well, yes, but it's not, I, you know. I kind of can't even dream on it. Yeah. And I like Stanton. All right. Well, we will uh, wait until they uh, tell us what they found. Then we can get more articles that are two, one sentence. <laughs> In the meantime, go, Monty, go. Oh, I can find you more articles that are one sentence. I've been reading them. Appreciate everyone that called in and everyone that subscribes to the channel or listens. And go Yanks. Come, Grams. Go Yankees.